so folks uh, I'm doing two recordings today and yesterday and tomorrow probably it's uh, because of the geopolitics havoc that's happening in uh, Ukraine well first things first right at the UNSC India withheld uh, 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 did not vote in favor or against uh, the resolution. However, the wordings India used were hardly flattering for Russia, and I think they would have been surprised. Not only that, it's, uh, India made it a point to recognize the sovereignty of Ukraine and did not uh, and did not approve of any action or any reason assigned thereof by Russia. Secondly, the important part is, from what I'm hearing is, firstly, civilians are being targeted, which goes to show desperation on the part of, uh, of Russia. And secondly, it just seems that Ukraine has done to Russia what the USSR did to Germany in World War II, suck them in, suck them in, stretch the logistics, logistics just not ready. Russian generals, fat, fat and corrupt. Just like the Chinese generals, by the way, fat and corrupt. They've forgotten how to fight, and they really there's no reason the soldier wants to fight. While the Ukraine, Ukrainian, just like the Indian, is protecting its territory and its very being. So what did we have here? Biden's unresolved consultation signal displeasure with India. True, but I think India managed to go halfway to, uh, by its statement today. Blinken calls up Jay Shankar, seeks collective response. It's time India jumped off the fence. Pakistan PM Khan gets no Russian commitment on gas pipeline. Well, too bad for Russia in sending its, its, its gas to a bankrupt country. Yes, unless that pipeline comes to India. Pakistan ready to scrap CPEX's report. Well, I'm sure they're going to have very little choice. Right? And what was happening earlier? With Ukraine tension at high, Putin, Biden, hold call, nothing really came of that. I mean, these are all post past, but I'm just reading this out to build the momentum. Ukraine, Putin signals talks with US to go on. That has always been his strategy. Russia troop build up biggest since World War II. Ukraine rebels, evacuate civilians to Russia after heavy shelling. US says Moscow has massed 190,000 troops in and around Ukraine. West fear of invasion grows as criminal raises tension with planned nuclear drills. So this, folks, was what it is. US called it right, or maybe US forced them into an invasion by just crying horse. Biden, Putin has decided to attack, aiming for Kiev, catastrophic, needless war of choice. Shelling continues, invasion fears rise. Well, they're no longer fears, man. They've invaded. Need quiet diplomacy on Ukraine, India at UN. Well, that's too late now, right? Moscow. Delhi's balanced, Delhi stand balanced and independent. And that independent is beginning to get most of us, right? Putin recognizes breakaway Ukraine regions. Biden Putin summit hangs in balance. Now, here's the thing, right? If China goes ahead and supports this 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 move by Russia, what if tomorrow Xi moves away and all of us go ahead and support it, right? But India needs to worry too, right? NATO says Russia still adding troops to Ukraine build up. This is after the uh, Russia had said they are not doing anything; they're pulling back. Russia keeps door open for diplomacy as Ukraine hints at concessions. Well, I think that's now way past, right? Russia seems to have overplayed their hand, so as Putin generals were just not ready for the war, the way I see it, right? Russia says troops pull back, West seeks proof, nothing happened really, right? Then you had this, Ukraine hints at concessions to Russia as Germany enters picture. Germany is the big play here. With Germany falling off the, uh, falling off away from Russia, Russia really, really is in trouble, right? And here's the Ukraine dilemma, as C. Raja Mohan writes, he says, as war clouds gather over Ukraine, there is much focus on India's diplomatic balancing acts. It is unwillingness to publicly caution Russia against invading Ukraine and above all its reluctance to defend Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. This is not the first time that Russia's approach to Central Europe has put Delhi in a tight corner. The Soviet invasion of Hungary 56, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia 68 exposed an important tension in Indian diplomacy. And India has really never learned, right? Russia did things for itself. It forced us off, and I keep repeating this, 
till everybody gets it in their minds. Everybody who supports Russia against Ukraine and uh, normally gets, oh, anything when it happens in the United States, there's a bunch of hypocrites, all this Kaval, Sibyl, that, uh, what is that, other, all these old guys from the IFS, just hypocrites of the first order, died in the wool, sheep in wool's clothing of Russia. That's what you are, Mr. Sibyl. And anyway, forget that, right? What does Indra, what does Indrani Bhakti writes? Kiev, the world and us. He says, China believes the US cannot stretch itself much further. Whether the US can or can't is one of the most important questions. It has worked very hard to get its Gulf partners like Qatar to redirect LNG to Europe. If that happens, it will deprive Qatar's big ticket buyers, China, India and Japan. What does she say? Moreover, an invasion of a sovereign nation should not find sympathy in India which is crying itself hoarse against China's encroachment into Indian territory. Up until now, India has deployed an ostrich, ostrich foreign policy strategy. So this is, this is rightly called or ostrich, which Sanjay, Sanjay Baru and people like Kaval Sibyl call balancing. <laughs> it's ostrich like, just like I said to you too, right? Up until now, India has deployed an ostrich foreign policy strategy. It won't be able to do this for much longer. Something New Delhi might consider telling Moscow. It should. Call it and nail them, right? You've got to remember why Imran was invited at this time, folks. That was a message that's a sword having a, a hanging over a head of Kashmir, right? India must think of reconfiguring its ties with Russia, right? He says, though its actions in Ukraine, Russia has challenged the global order in fundamental ways and India's foreign policy won't be immune from its reverberations. Harishpan. But this is the part I keep saying and he finds the same, I, I, I hear the same, same, same song here, right? But it's the non-government reaction to India's that's befuddling, befuddling to say the least. Ukraine is being sacrificed at the altar of great power politics and yet there seems little sympathy for it. This is right. This crisis and the Western response will have a significant bearing on the strategic environment in the Indo-Pacific a theater that India claims is different from the European one, which probably is not going to be right. And what do we have that Chidanand Rajgatha writes from the US, from DC? Putin gambles, Biden scrambles. What does he say? New Delhi has a few things going for it to thwart any Ukraine-like adventurism. Nuclear cover for one thing, something Ukraine are wishing they had retained. More than at any time, India should express gratitude for Vajpayee's decision to go nuclear in the teeth of America and world opinion. He says, in contrast, American munificence is underappreciated, whether it is shipping food grains to India in the 1960s or allowing thousands of Indian students to study in the US even at the height of the Cold War. And these are the guys, folks, who are right there on top of almost every major company in the United States. Thank the United States for it, right? Yes, India and the world has had its moments of malice from the US. The Soviet Union and its successor state has been a good friend, but Russia's response to being cornered by NATO has been hasty, reckless and disproportionate. <clears throat> it also creates a dangerous precedent for India from aggressor states. New Delhi should back Washington. It's a no-brainer. I agree with him. Then what do we have that is written by what India can learn from Ukraine crisis as Siyudhe Baska, the manner in which the Ukraine crisis has unfolded could be described as an extension of the hybrid warfare model that Moscow on Putin's, Putin's watch has successfully honed from Syria to Kazakhstan and now Central Europe. The leavening or the leavening of military muscle with a robust information campaign and the resolute exploitation of, of suasion that does not rule out Brickmanship tactic offers certain cues for India in relation to the discord with China. That and a lot more it says. Regrettably, the strategic communication about the Galwan setback and the status of LAC has been below par as far as India is concerned. And what is Dhruv Shankar right? What the crisis in Ukraine reveals? It exposes the limitation of both hard and soft power and there are cautionary lessons for India from the European and Russian experiences. Absolutely. Equally, India could draw the right uh, inference from Russia's predicament. Investment in military or hard power alone, absent complementary efforts in non-military domain, do not compromise a winning strategy over the long run. And Russia is bogged down, folks. Don't cheer them on. They are wrong. History 
or not history. Ukraine was part of them or not part of them. If we go back far enough, Ukraine was an independent country many, many years ago. Depends on where your history starts and where you start building the narrative. India has got to learn, learn and learn fast because what goes into play if you keep quiet on this front like you did in Afghanistan is you put the historical narrative of, of Tibet, which China uses that it, that at one time uh, uh, Ladakh was part of uh, Tibet and Arunachal was part of Tibet. You put yourself in a in a uh, in a uh, your, with your back against the fall. Jai Hind.